For more on the market volatility, let's bring in Canyon Partners co-CEO Josh Friedman. Josh, it's a good, it's a good day and a good time to talk to you. What, what is your takeaway from this week where we got softer than expected CPI, inflation, that was good news for the markets, and then the Fed, I guess projecting a hawkish message. The way I look at it, Sarah, and thank you for having me on the show again, um, I view it as certain markets face headwinds and certain markets face tailwinds. And I think what we're seeing right now is some of the headwinds that are facing the equity markets. We're still standing in the 75th to 85th percentile in terms of almost any valuation metric you could possibly mention for equities. So you have multiples that are high. Earnings are clearly going to be challenged both by higher interest rates, by higher labor costs, by margin squeezes. You have growth under, under, uh, under attack by the Fed, which is clearly trying to engineer a bit of a slowdown in demand. And then you no longer, on the other hand, have the TINA economy where there's where there's simply uh, no other alternative. Um, in, this, in this case, you can put your money in treasuries and you can earn in excess of 4%. So I think there are a lot of headwinds that continue to face the equity markets, whether it's a soft landing or a hard landing or whether the Fed oversteers or doesn't oversteer. On the other just hand, you, I think, sorry. I sorry didn't, didn't mean to cut you off, but just, just because you think the market is still overvalued at this point? I just think there's not clear visibility as to when you resume some of the more obvious attractiveness in valuations or the catalyst that would spur mm -hmm. things higher. Um, we're coming from a very, very crazy place in terms of valuations across all risk assets. And the corrections that have taken place in the equity markets are not so enormous or so great off the peaks as to make that market clearly systematically attractive, in my view. Clearly, it's more attractive than it was two days ago. But I think some of the challenges that I mentioned continue to face that market. Whereas I think if you look at the other end of the spectrum, you look at credit markets, which have also taken a tremendous beating this year, you're already at a point where a half a trillion dollars has been exiting from the mutual fund world, causing a lot of pressure on pricing. Banks are basically not lending to broad swaths of the economy today, including real estate, which is immediately challenged. Um, high yield market is, is new issue markets down something like 80 percent year to date, I think 78 percent. And the Fed is continuing to speak in a hawkish way. So pricing in the credit markets now uh, is so different than what it was any time in the last decade to the point where there's first lien debt yielding 12, 13 percent, 11 percent, 14 percent, and second lien debt or unsecured debt yielding even higher. Now, it's not systematically available. The markets aren't perfectly fluid and liquid, but they never are. But I think that there are tailwinds there where there are headwinds facing the equity market. So the, they have very different types of optionality than what we saw even uh, any, any time really before March. So is that what we got a taste of this week, where the equity market sold off hard and the bond market rallied, even with the Fed talking about higher rates for longer? Yes, that's exactly what we saw. And it would not surprise me terribly to see that going forward. Um, it, it's very hard to predict the exact trajectory uh, that the Fed chair would like to map out. Uh, and sometimes uh, uh, he says one thing and then walks it back. But in the equity market, I used to say the old market was the buy the dips market because the Fed was there to protect you whenever there was anything adverse that happened. Yeah. This is almost the opposite. So instead of buying the dips, it's sell the peaks because anytime there's good news, it's bad news because that gives the Fed more license to take on aggress even more aggressively the inflation that's embedded in the market. So if the market starts to creep up, the Fed chair speaks more aggressively. Do you think that they are going to make a mistake? Do you think they're overdoing it? I think they might oversteer a little bit. One of the one of I guess one of the issues that I see, Sarah, is that um, interest rates are a very blunt instrument for addressing general levels of demand.